just as I was about to leave to get on that plane, I got another call from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he said, no brother, don't go. Now, it's a wonderful thing to have a leader on whom you can rely and in whom you can put trust to obey. In truth, I wanted to go. In truth, I wanted to do whatever I could to ease the situation of our brothers who have now taken part of the prison and had many white hostages and the Muslims stood around the white hostages knowing that if the brothers in their anger killed the hostages then all of them would die because the enemy is just that, that kind of person. So the Muslims were guarding the hostages and negotiating. So when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me the second time, don't go, I couldn't tell him I want to go, although that was my heart, I just said, yes sir. And in less than 24 hours, they were killing our brothers wholesale. Now at that time in the state of New York, Farrakhan was very well known, had a huge following in New York City and Harlem, and the governor well knew my activities, and even though we did not vote, as God is my witness, I could call every black elected official, and they would respond to my call and be in my office even though I never had voted. Because they understood, even if I didn't vote, I had that kind of strength with the masses of our people. It could have been that they wanted me up in it so that I wouldn't be able to stand before you today. And it would be so easy for them to say, well, he was negotiating, something happened, and we're very unfortunate. You know how they do. It's unfortunate, but the man you know as Louis Farrakhan is dead. When I saw the slaughter, I mean, I literally wept. Because I wondered if I could have gone good. I in any way have made a difference and saved some precious lives for some very beautiful black people. The horror of that documentary though was this happened about 35 years or 30 years ago. We didn't know the full story. But in the documentary, you could see, I could see looking back more than I saw because the news media was translating what was going on and Assemblyman Arthur Eve of Buffalo, New York, who was a friend of mine, came to tell me what he saw, but he didn't see the whole thing. But now looking back in a documentary, the worst slaughter took place after the slaughter because once they had taken control of the prison, or retaken control, the horror that they put on the brothers. I mean, it touched me so deeply last week because it gave me again a reminder of the nature of the enemy in whose hands we are and what we are about to face. Since you young people don't know the enemy, you don't know him. You don't know him like your father and 
your grandfather and your great grandfather. You are out here romancing with the children of the enemy who are also enemies. But to you, they're friends. So you feel that because you can walk downtown with a white woman and even marry her, that everything is all right. No, it's not all right, brother. It's not all right, sister. And you will soon come to me. When I saw that horror, something triggered inside of me and I didn't turn the dial. And right after that documentary, one came up on a man named Randy Weaver. Randy Weaver is a white man from Iowa who took his family and moved to Idaho. He's a white man that did not think much of the authority of the government of the United States. And he joined with a white racist group in that part of the country. He took his little money, about $5,000, and bought a piece of land on a, a, a hill in Idaho, Iowa, I mean Idaho, and built a home for his family living in the woods. But he made a mistake and sold a sawed-off shotgun to an agent that the FBI had planted among that group. And I'm saying to you young brothers, don't you ever think that you can plan something against this enemy and he not know it. Because the very brother that you may be planning it with is paid and a paid informant of both of your enemies. But he thinks that by informing on you, he's a, he will be given a lighter deal. This is how they work with you who've been in prison. They catch you doing something wrong and then they tell you they'll lighten the sentence if you will rat out your brother. And some of you believe that and do that. Only to find out that the enemy hates the snitch that he made. And when he goes to kill your brother, at some point he'll kill you. He offered 30 million dollars for Kuse and Ude. Kuse. And evidently somebody said where they were that the Iraqi children of Saddam Hussein and the Pentagon was happy to announce that they had killed them both respects you. Saddam Hussein was once a friend of America. He's now the ace of spades in their deck of cards. Noriega was once a friend of America. He's doing time in Florida. All the friends that he makes, that 
aid him or facilitate his will or his way, ultimately he turns on them. You don't have a nature that you can trust.